Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about cloud knowledge. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, it seems that many companies have CI or CD knowledge requirements today. Is it really important? And some have, and in some cases you have to know AVS. What do you think? Thanks. So uh, this is an excellent point. Um, this is one of those those things that that distinguishes a more experienced developer from an inexperienced developer, and it's also the thing that distinguishes usually a person who has been working in. I, well, you know, I've used this term niched way a few times, where you might be doing something very specific, or you're doing something that is not really the same sort of thing that most of the major companies are doing, or most of what the relevant technology companies are doing. And a very give like a telltale sign of a developer who hasn't really worked at scale. Uh, well, it's not always the case, but in many cases, is that they lack knowledge in continuous integration or continuous delivery or CI, CD, depending on what strategy you have. And the two uh, tools, as an example, like uh, GitHub uh, has, uh, I mean, GitHub, uh, as probably most of you know, is a version control system, or, well, it's not a version control system, it is a repository using Git, which is a version control system. But to, with the introduction of GitHub Actions and so forth, you can actually create delivery pipelines. Other tools that are very popular for this sort of thing is like Travis, it's, uh, but I mean, Jenkins is probably one of the oldest and most popular ones. And then you have some like GitLab for example and the basic idea is just that you have some central application somewhere where the developers have the ability to push code to that application and usually it includes some it's multiple applications usually that are tied into this thing right and then you have reviews etc etc and then you have some way of very efficiently hopefully deploying that into a testing environment or into a uh, production environment. So you can create your own workflows depending on what type of infrastructure solutions you have and so forth. It's very customizable, but you do need to have fairly serious knowledge of software in order to do it depend like it's in cookie cut situations you can have like a cloud architect do this but for most serious IT companies you need actual uh, DevOps or software developers to do this uh, or at the very least an experienced DevOps person. Now for you as a software developer I will tell you that the there is a very strong value for you to know about this stuff it is not if you're a junior developer it is not the end of the world if you don't know this stuff because it's something that you you will pick it up like for most I mean it's a very nice to have if you know about if you if you know about this stuff and you have experience working with it since in the past but this here's the kicker this is the problem with this you will never organically do this on your own and no school is going to teach you how to use this there and you're not going to do it in your own workflow because it's it's a platform that is specifically designed for large scale development with multiple teams and multiple people and since you're like just you why would you use it it's completely pointless for a sp like a personal project so it really it's kind of in a sense it's the same it's a similar sort of thing to uh, is using say kubernetes for personal development yeah you can do it but it's really not necessary like it would be overkill for like local development or whatever you're doing so uh, you will uh, don't kick yourself if you don't have experience as a junior developer what I will tell you is that you will it, it is very relevant to know this stuff but not to the level where you know how to set it up you need to know how to consume it think of this as similar to if a person who wants to go into administrative work if it says that you should have experience with Microsoft Office or whatever what it basically means is 
you know how to use this thing and that is exactly what uh, where you that level that you should keep if you're a devops or operations or something like that type of developer then the requirements are higher on you because then basically you're responsible for this is like one of the major areas that you are responsible for for making this work because you have all these developers who build application code and then they need this platform to actually work and they have to have, in, like the platform needs to have enough resources to, to run all the tests and so forth. So there that you actually need deep in-depth uh, in depth knowledge, but as a regular software developer, you just need, know, need to know how to use it. As for Amazon uh, AWS, or depending on which cloud provider you use, it is, uh, I, I would say that uh, it, it, it very much depends, once again, it depends on the maturity of the company and what work structure they have. What you should know is that it is, it is it, everything is moving towards the cloud at this point. Like all the major, all the companies are moving to cloud solutions. And so you, like, I mean, you, there is no way for an average person to know all the services of Amazon, like uh, AVS or GCP or so forth. You will use a few of them, not all of them, but it's not something that you as a software, you don't have to like get a, like, you, sure, get certified. That That's great. Like if you get certified and uh, learn about it, that like, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. What I'm saying is that uh, it's very relevant for you to know about cloud solutions and how to work with the cloud and so forth. But the thing that is most relevant is that you understand the common and uh, the common denominators between the different cloud providers. Because the problem is that, uh, I mean, sure, you can say, I'm going to go and learn Amazon, uh, AVS. I'm going to learn like EC2, S3, or, like all of those standard stuff or um, Elastic Beanstalk, like all of this stuff. Uh, and then you go to a company where they use GCP or Azure. And then you're kind of like, then again, they have a different way of doing things. The benefit to, the, to all of this is, guys, that uh, the the cloud providers, in, in a sense, not don't take this uh, literally, they're similar to the telecommunication companies or the phone companies. They're offering the same sort of stuff, it's just different flavors of it. So I mean, if, if you want a virtual machine, then well, all three of them, they have their own way of doing it and all their interfaces are different, but the concepts are the same. And this is what you remember, I've said this before, those core skills I'm talking about, because like a variable is always a variable depend or a loop is always a loop in every programming language. This is exactly what I'm talking about. When you understand the concept, like what it actually is and have like some practice with one case, such as say Amazon, uh, well, then it's not a super hard thing for you to figure out how that works in GCP or Azure, even though you're going to have to kind of learn it from, you know, you're going to have to learn their way of doing things. So what I want you to take away from this is, number one, yes, CI and CD knowledge is, well, I'm not saying a requirement per se if you're a junior software developer, but it's getting to that point. If you're a mid-level or senior software developer, for sure. I'm not, once again, I'm not saying that it is a requirement, but it is a, it is a testament to your career and the, the level of development that you have been doing. It is uh, basically standard practice at this point to have some type of uh, deployment uh, system such as, such as Jenkins, GitLab, etc., etc. If you are a mid-level or senior software developer and you don't have this knowledge, it it's a little bit, I'm not saying an eyesore, but I hope that you understand it. It's, uh, it's similar to a you know, a professional race car driver not knowing how to, to drive stick or something. It's kind of weird because you sh at some point you should have learned this. It's it's almost expected of you. Um, <clears throat> so I would say to a point it is important. You and your software developers, less so, but you will pick it up, I promise. And as for learning how to use cloud providers such as Amazon and so forth, I will say that yes, you should be at least, uh, as a software developer, you will need to know at least the basics about what, what is a virtual machine, what, like what, what's a bucket, what is storage, um, what is a load balancer, etc, etc, VPC, well, what's that? Uh, and so forth and so forth. And you can pretty much pick whichever I can, you know, Amazon is the biggest game in town in the space so if you learn it there you can 
kind of pick up the other stuff and but you could start with GCP as so and so forth as well you don't have to be like a full-fledged cloud architect or anything like that but you should be aware of how all of these sorts of things work uh, the reason is very simple because you don't know what type of setup your company has and what maturity level they are some companies have like full-fledged like they have their own ops team and like they have all this set up for you so you really only need to know how to consume like the internal systems that they have to do all of this stuff but in some companies you actually do have to spin up your own resources or use terraform by hand or like whatever so it's it's a little bit of a jungle you don't really know what you're getting you in yourself into and this is where learning the concepts and the core, the core stuff is a good investment for you. Have a great day.